Pokemon! You know what? I'm not doing another Pokemon intro. Trilogies! They're pretty good sometimes. It's It feels like the right length for a story. You know, just a, a, a casual one, two, three, a nice three act. Uh, there's, there's plenty of trilogies in media. Uh, Shrek is a trilogy. Star Wars is a trilogy of trilogies. Uh, and... I mean, surely one of those movies has to be good, right? There's fucking nine of them. I don't know. Maze Runner? And there is a trilogy here that uh, it was about time we finished off. So, without further ado, here, here are my closing thoughts on the Scarlet and Violet DLC. The epilogue is out. It is officially done, complete, over, the whole thing. It, we've made it to the end. There's nothing new on the horizon. Eventually it will be the next game. So, that means we have all the information, the cards are all out on the table, and we can talk openly and honestly about how the DLC went. Uh, and it went! I gotta give it a bit of credit. Uh, we picked it up. A bit. So, let's talk about my wants going into it from the last video. Uh, what got delivered on and what didn't. And we'll go from there. You were not a character. You were... You were not a character. She wasn't a character. She was a flaw. And that's really it. And the flaw wasn't even an interesting flaw. The flaw was negligence. Like, come on. I thought she was gonna be a villain. And I'm willing to stand up and admit, well, sit down and admit when I'm wrong. She wasn't technically a villain. She was just boring. I mean, truly, how do you... How do you do that so wrong that you're very clearly like, here's who the villain is gonna be, is not even bad, they're just ignorant. They're endangering children, which, yeah, sucks, but like, you're at this point the strongest person in the region, your age isn't really a factor. If anyone should have been down in Area Zero, uh, or in the, what's it called, the Underdark? Area negative one, what the fuck, what, whatever the fuck that place is called. If anyone should have been there, it's you. And there was never a real threat. Let's have a threat! I mean, <laughs> come on! It was not good. The- ugh, she was not good. She just wasn't. She was barely a character. I'm repeating myself because I can't believe- I can't believe I was wrong in a way that makes me more angry rather than less. I hadn't even considered that that was possible. Creamtown, say something about it so I can- I have no idea how to breathe. We got a better legendary. That's, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give that one credit. Honestly, all of the legendaries were good. It feels disingenuous to count the final dogs as part of the DLC when the first two-thirds of that trilogy, ha, ah, trilogy, wasn't. They just came out kind of on their own. Walking Wake and, uh, and Raging Bolt and whatever, whatever the other ones are, the iron whatevers. It makes me so angry that they're all just iron. That's the one, the one violet, uh, L that I'm willing to admit to. That and the fact that we didn't get Gly Glygar, whatever we got instead of Glygar, Apom, I think it was, I don't know. Uh, those are the, those are the only two ways that I'm willing to concede that Scarlet won something. But uh, other than that, no, Violet all the way. Violet was just the better game. Uh, and you're welcome to think otherwise. Uh, and you're welcome to be wrong. You know? Everyone's welcome to be wrong. But anyway, my point is, uh, the two legendaries that we got, uh, Turtle Boy and, and, and Barry Mochi Man, uh, were both decent. I have some notes. <laughs> I, I have concerns certainly but they were good they were certainly better than the teal mask legendary four um where one of them made it up to competent and the other three were garbage uh but they still both feel over designed that's the problem uh we've got a problem of over designing things that we're trying to make important with both of the new legendaries their base forms are good Honestly, their base forms are really strong. Petra Runt closed, 
and Terrapagos Little Boy are both good, because they're pretty simple, all things considered. They're cute, they're trying to be cute, they hit the mark. That's, that's all it needs to be. Like I said in the last video, I'm not going to hold these guys to the standard of, like, Rayquaza or, or Reshiram, because they're not trying to be one of those huge beefcake box legendaries. They're trying to be one of the, like, sprite types, and they're doing it well. Um, Terrapagos' second form, also good. Honestly, great, even. I'll give you that. I like that it's got the, like, different, um, scales. It's a, it's a good design. It's a good design. Petrant Open has a bit more going on than I'd like. I don't, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I feel like giving it the little, like, headband and the ultra-thick eyebrows was a poor choice. It still, it's, its face feels busy. You, you're just a busy little dude. But, I mean, you're taking over the whole town, that's, you're busy, I get it. Tarabago's third form is the one that really suffers. This is not good. It's over-designed, obviously, but, like... I just, I don't like it. I want Terrapagos to be important, not the gimmick. And this feels like the gimmick is important, because, like, maybe 20% of this image is Terrapagos. Really, like, cut out the part, editor, put up Terrapagos, I'm sure he's already been up. Now put bars above the part of this that is the actual creature relative to two more bars that are the weird hat and the crown and the globe that he's standing on and all of the symbols flying around him. Look at this size comparison. Why is the legendary 20% of this model? Here's the comparison that I will offer you. Look at base Terrapagos and now look at fully gimmicked Terrapagos, uh, Terra. Terra, Terra, what's it called? Terrastalized, that's what it is. Now look at Deonce and Mega Deonce. There's a very clear difference here in that this one has become about the gimmick, 100%. It's got the world, it's got all the things floating around it, and then the crown, and then the little guy, and then the second crown. There's just so much going on. All of it is like, look, terrastalization. This is what we're doing. It's not about the guy. And now look at this one. It is a very clear jump, one to two. There's not, like, little Deancey's floating off or anything. This one is just, here's this little tiny bit of legendary and the rest is just look at the gimmick. I don't like it. It's not good. It, I don't know how I would fix it because I, I'm not a spriter, I'm not a modeler, but it needs work, and I'm sure it could have been... Honestly, it would have been better if they just left him little and his terraform was his second form. Why'd they give him a first form that's just for dicking around? You never see the first form, and it's the best version. I'm upset. Speaking of upset... Where are the new Pokémon? Four? Four. We get four new Pokemon. That's it. Twelve in the entire DLC. There's more game here than there was in the base game, and it's still not good. We're coming to Pokemon to see the new Pokemon. That's the whole appeal, because it's not the gameplay. It's certainly not the mechanics, because it still looks like this. In fact, it looks worse. It's, this one ran worse than the previous two. I don't know if it was something to do with the, the Terra, Terrace, the globe, the biodome, whatever the fuck it's called, being more strenuous in some way, or that it had more NPCs or more shit to load. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but it, it has gotten even worse than when Scarlet and Violet released, and I don't understand how that's possible. Why is it getting worse. Regardless, the reason we're here is to see the new Pokemon. If they had done what I said and let the let the writing team for the two good stories just go wild out of the six stories from before epilogue, 
Uh, not epilogue. Um, DLC part two. Then we might have been here for the story. And honestly, I'll give you that some of the story was good. We'll get to that in a minute. But, like, we're here for new Pokemon. Give me more than four new Pokemon. Even, like, 20. 20 is not a big number. I could come up with 20 new Pokemon, not even using any of the, like... I, I could come up with 20 original Pokemon. Probably, it'd probably take me a week. And they'd be balanced, and they'd have interesting concepts, and they might not all be good, but they'd at least be passable. We're talking about the biggest, most successful media property of all time. How are we slacking on everything? I don't understand what the developers are doing, genuinely. It's made it to the point where, like, I'm, I'm asking. I'm not even taking shots at. I want to know what development time was spent on. The map still wasn't huge, and it was pretty similar all the way through. Like, there were four, five counting the electrical caves, significant areas in the main map of the DLC, part two. And it still wasn't ultra complicated. Like, there's not a ton of stuff to find in every nook and cranny, and it's just, like, it's landscape, and there's some shape to it, I guess, but it's not ultra complicated. It certainly shouldn't have been the only thing they had time to make. Four new Pokemon is not enough. The fact that there, were, there was one new Pokemon for each Elite Four member is tragic, especially since only one of them got a new one. I don't know how we can say this any more clearly. I'm talking to a stuffed ice cream cone. I'm so upset. The new Pokemon weren't even bad. There was just only four of them. And can we like let Applin have a break? It's weird that we got like, here is the apple. He becomes these two. And then also this, which becomes something else. I don't, I actually don't have a problem with that. I. I'm gonna fully take that one back. No, I like what they did with Hydra Apple. I like that we're getting weird shapes and evolution trees. I just want more Pokemon. I can't reiterate this enough. It's a Pokemon game. We should have more than four new Pokemon. Even if it's a DLC, I don't care. Carmine got no comeuppance. None, not a, not a bit of it. She was a little bit sad at the thing that she pretty directly caused, which was Kieran just going down a dark path. And we'll get to Kieran. I liked Kieran. Um, but totally no comeuppance for Carmine. Just continuing to yell at her brother for making choices and then being touted as a hero for bullying him into submission yet again. Uncool. I stand by hit her with a bus. I stand by being upset that she was not hit by a bus. I do wish that when this happened, we got to see her be just devastatingly humiliated about it later, but either doesn't remember it or doesn't care. Just not good. Not good writing that, that this terrible, terrible person faced no comeuppance. Relatedly, I'm bummed that we called this guy a villain. He was cool. I liked him a lot. He was a good new character. Um. Cool that he was addressing Kieran's issues rather than just being like, ah, oh, well, you know Kiki, he's, uh, he's, yep. He actually was trying to help his friend in a way, and granted, it was in a, it was in kind of a mean, tough love way, but like, hey, I'm in for, I'm in for flawed characters. This is a wild concept for Pokemon, I know. Let's have some flawed characters so we can actually tell interesting stories. And he was by no means revolutionary. They were really just using him to push the plot towards, we need a reason for you to fight Kieran again. And that's fine, that's whatever. But like, the other three Elite Four members were so bad. They weren't good. Uh, we'll go one at a time. Spicy Cookman. Uh, the only interesting thing I got out of him was during the battle with Kieran, somebody finally used a pronoun for him. Or maybe I just uh, heard it for the first time, I wasn't paying attention. And I just fully went, that's a guy? So, none of the Pokemon characters have genders, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> anyway, he didn't matter. I, he was, he was goofy. 
The only line that seemed to affect him in any way was realizing that he had been kicked out of the E4 when you become the champion. And even then, he didn't really care. He was just like, oh, huh, all right. And like, that's boring. I hate this bitch. I hate Lacey. Lacey's her name? Something like that. Um, not just because she's the fairy type trainer, and we by now should all know how I feel about fairy types, but also because I... I'll give that this one is not as... not a problem with the writing, I just hate this type of character, because it feels unbelievable. Maybe there are people like this, but I... I don't think I've ever met anyone nearly this bad, and so it, it rings false to me when someone acts like this. I can give a pass to Lacey in that I just don't like that type of character. And that's a personal thing. But to turn that up to 11, this fucking thing. I... Why does she talk like a robot? Why do they treat her like she's a robot? And I get that it's, yeah, she's a steel type. She's meant to be rigid. Whatever. First off, I hate that we're leaning so boringly into types like that. In that, like, yes, steel people talk very rigidly. And fire people are very passionate. Like, let's... <sighs> yeah, this is... Okay, a tangent time. Can we stop having typed gym leaders? We've done enough of that. We get it. It's over. It was cool for nine generations. Can we please start having gyms that are even just themed? Like, I... Here we go. Okay? We're gonna, we're gonna rock through this right now. The four Elite Four members, each of them have a distinct personality, whether or not I like it, and could have had teams indicative of their personality rather than just an arbitrary type. Let's make the chef have food Pokemon. There are enough food Pokemon that that would work. You could even do a fun little thing. It was a doubles battle. Have it be a three course meal. Hold on, I'm gonna fully design this team. One minute, 37 seconds later. Here's the team. Doxabund? and uh, chair him. Fruit and bread, opening course, easy. Then we're doing doubles. Let's use Tatsugiri and Dondozo. They're a doubles setup. That's the whole point of them. Sushi main course. And then for dessert, you get my boy Creamtown in there and Appleton, it, pie a la mode. It's, it's so fucking simple. I, g give me an hour and I could rock through the whole Elite Four and give them something interesting like that. Let's, that wouldn't even be a bad doubles build. Like, you've got the Dondozo set up. We want it to not be, like, ultra competitive level, but still hard. You've got the strong dragon type with an ice type to cover for if people come at you. With an ice, you've got the ice to fight back with. It's a... This is not difficult. This is not a big ask. And I'm... I'm so over typed gyms because they stopped being interesting in, like, Hoenn and we're still doing it in Generation 9. Let's talk about Kieran. Kieran had a decent arc. I'll give him that. From the bullying that he received in the first one, it makes sense that he would, like, wrap into himself and become obsessed with getting stronger in that, like, Jimbro working out type of way, especially in this fight-based society. It's a it's a believable next step. It's a believable reaction to trauma. And it is a reaction to trauma. Let's be very clear. That's what's happening. He was traumatized in the first part. And now he's finding a way to cope. And while it is a bummer that we have to watch him get shattered fully by still not being able to beat you in the in the canon way that, that fight went, because I definitely lost that fight once even though I went at it underleveled. Whatever, not the point. It was cool to watch, like, emotional turmoil and see him, like, struggling with himself. Then we go to the place, and I don't know why Carmine's invited. She should not have been invited. Drayden should have gone so that we could, like, have positive reinforcement rather than negative. Um... It, it sucks that Carmine was the one to finally be like, come on, Kiki, get it together. Because she still doesn't do it right. She's still, like, quit acting like a child rather than it's okay to lose sometimes. I... I'm so upset for my boy. And then he... I called it. 
Play it in the first. Play from the second video. And none of that, like, Kieran realizes he's wrong and everyone does the, oh, we're glad you're better and we're sorry for going so hard. None of that shit. I fucking called it that he was going to be the one that apologizes to everyone when he's not wrong. I'm so... And I swear to God, someone at Game Freak watched my, my last video where I, they were upset that Kieran didn't catch Ogre Pond. And then we, like, get a second one or whatever. Because he... It was so, so cool when he caught fucking Terrapagos. And I wish it had stuck. I wish we... Uh, I, for real, I would rather us fully not be able to catch Terrapagos and he gets to keep it than <laughs> them being like, look, here's this thing that could have been cool. Ah, oh, nope, it's you're the hero and Kieran doesn't get to have feelings. Honestly, here's my pitch. He should have caught Terrapagos after the fight. Um, he, he should have thrown the Master Ball when he did, it fails, he keeps it. We win the fight, he does it again, and then you get to fight him one more time, and you get to lose, or win, depending on what actually happens, and then he offers you a trade of Chirapagos for Ogre Pond. That's how I would have ended that, and it would have been better. Because, god damn it, we should have let him have a win. I like that he trades you the Applin, though, especially because there's that, like, Trading someone in Applin is a is a uh, basically like a proposal, um, or a confession rather, not a proposal. Um, that was cute. And if you didn't also trade him back in Applin, you're a fucking coward, and it makes me sad because that's the that's the canon way that that should go. <laughs> but I'm glad he gets a win. I'm glad he gets a couple of wins. I'm sad he is not apologized too because he really deserves more than he got. But he got something, and I'll, I'll give it to him, because I, I feel bad for him. His hair does look better down. <laughs> Fully removed from, like, the emotional attachment behind it, his hair does look better down. But yeah, just justice for Kiki, man. I, my poor little boy. He deserved so much better. The epilogue was pretty good. I gotta give points to the epilogue. I wish they had leaned harder into the scary, which sucks because it is a children's property at the end of the day, and I, I know they were never going to, and they were like, let's do this scary thing and then make it silly by making everyone do the, the mochi mochi chicken dance. It was cool. It was fun watching people fall one by one. It was pretty like baby's first body snatchers, but that's what it was meant to be, so I gotta... I gotta give that one point. It was cool to see the new, the DLC characters and the main game characters interact. Um, it was cool that Nimona was the final boss. She's definitely the best fighter anywhere in the game. Uh, you can suck my entire dick, you useless fucking champion. But that was cool. I liked it. The only part of it that I didn't like was them trying to like humanize and quote unquote redeem the, the loyal bastards. It's better! The story's better when these three just suck. The story is not better when they were being mind-controlled and now we have to be like, oh, I guess they were cool, because, like, these things are terrible. I still, I still hate them and I wish them to, I wish them nothing but being villains so that we can all have fun shitting on them, because they're, they look terrible and they are terrible and I don't like them. I like Petrarun. I think he's funny. He's just a, he's just a silly little guy. I do kind of wish he didn't open up. We talked about this already. I like Petrarun. It was good. I liked the epilogue. I gotta give full points to the epilogue. I bet you the epilogue was the Arvin team. See my first and slightly second video for, for what I mean by that. It was, it was all right. I gotta give points to the epilogue. Honestly, it was all decent. It was, the best thing I can say about it is that it was a ramp in quality and not a ramp in the other direction. It started real bad, and it got better and better as it went on, rather than the opposite, which I'm glad because I was really worried after the first part that we were gonna start at like a two out of 10 and just sink, which to be fair, did not happen. The teal mask was the worst part and it got better and better. The, the biggest thing I can say is why the fuck were there only 12 Pokemon in the whole thing? 12 new ones. And all almost all of them were evolutions. Did we get a single new thing that wasn't an evolution or a legendary? I guess Macha Gacha. He was cool. Macha... Macha... Geist? 
I don't know, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, these things. All in all, was it worth the $35 you have to pay to play it? No, it wasn't, because you can just watch it. And honestly, we should just be watching Pokemon games for now, until Game Freak gets off its ass and makes something new. And I don't mean a new game, I mean a new game. More on that in a future video. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you liked this, check out the Patreon, check out the Discord if you want. Uh, come hang out with people that like to talk about Pokemon and other things. From Creamtown and I, we will see you in whatever the next video is. Bye.